unrefined and thirsty turbocharged four-cylinder engine. But the RDX mostly solves those problems, especially with its 3.5 the interior looks luxurious. There's lots of padded panels and stitching details, and the perforated leather seats look flocked. and the windshield pillars are hard. Those shortcuts aren't expected in a luxury brand. Another surprise, the welcome change from the typical Acura button-strewn dashboard. There is a spacious driving position inside as well. Even tall drivers had plenty of accommodating. With a good blend of support and comfort, Rear seat room is spacious as well, with enough space for three adults. A flat floor helps with cargo area, but the 1,500 pound towing capacity is weak for this class, especially given this much power. Ultimately, the RDX fuel economy and the roomy interior has a lot of features for the price. But the RDX isn't your pick if you want a sporty generates very quick acceleration times in our tests. Many rivals have seven or eight speed automatic transmissions, and while the art fuel economy numbers. What's not so impressive is that on slippery surfaces, even with all-wheel drive, transferring power to all four wheels. Turns out that driving dynamics don't quite measure up to the powertrain. The RDX prefers a driver feedback. Step things up in corners and body roll shows up fast. Limits are low, and the RDX wasn't all that composed going through. All in all, rivals like the BMW X3 and the Audi Q5 handle better and are more enjoyable to drive. Before, it's still nothing special. Frequent and quick body motions make the ride feel busy, and bumps sometimes punch through. We often complain, and while it's much less pronounced than the RDX, you can still hear it on rough roads. A good glass area provides easy visit. Rear roof pillar is quite thick, making a blind spot there. And the head restraints block a lot of the small rear window.